Okay, hello everybody. Today we're here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in the Cessna 152. We are at my home field of Whiskey Bravo Whiskey, Wilkes-Barre, Wyoming Valley, and we are going nowhere. I started out planning to take you somewhere, which was 76 November Skyhaven, but when things went awry with that flight, I got an awesome idea, and I can't believe I haven't tried this before. So if you hop into the pilot seat, I'll tell you the story of how we got here and what we're going to do. So this flight started like all of my flights with the aircraft cold and dark on the ramp, me flipping all the switches, starting up the engine, setting the frequencies, checking the wind sock, making my CTAF call, and taxing to the hold short lines for the run-up. I'm running with the JP Logistics mod, which adds realism, so it's important to do a good run-up to make sure that everything in the aircraft works. Another thing that I do in the run-up in real life that you don't usually see in my videos is a takeoff brief, and the beginning of it goes like this. We have 3375 runway length to work with, see anything we don't like while we're still on the ground, throttle idle, feet on the brakes, come to a stop. If we have an engine failure after rotation before turning crosswind, we're going to pitch for best glide, which is 65 knots in this aircraft, find a spot straight ahead, and land. And there's more to the takeoff brief after that, but those are the two things I want you to focus on because I have said them a million times. So I taxi out onto runway 7, get myself all lined up, apply full throttle, and accelerate. And when I do, the oil pressure spikes again, just like it did in the last video. And unlike the last video, the engine quits. So I'm rolling and decelerating on the runway with an aborted takeoff uh, with an engine failure right on the runway. And I'm thinking, wow, that's what I brief for. I brief for something that happens before rotating. And then it hit me. I've briefed a hundred times if I had an engine failure before turning crosswind what I would do, but I've never tried it in the simulator. And that is the worst time to have an engine failure when you are about 300 feet above the ground and have very limited options with where you can set the aircraft down. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a normal takeoff. We're going to climb to 300 feet above ground. Right there, I'm going to pull the mixture to idle cutoff, which will kill the engine. Then I'm going to count to three before I react for the startle factor. Then I'm going to react, and we'll see what happens. I'll figure out whatever techniques I need to use to get it down to where it needs to be based on what things look like there. To be honest, I'm not quite sure because, knock on wood, I've never had to do this. And I've got a feeling I'm going to learn something from this, hopefully something that can actually help me in real life by practicing it safely in the simulator. Here's what the field at the departure end of seven looks like in real life. It actually looks pretty big here as you fly over it. And here's what the soccer field looks like on the departure end of two five, which does look a bit smaller. All right, we're all lined up on runway seven. We're going to go full throttle and do a normal takeoff. It's actually a crosswind takeoff because we're running with live weather and we've got a decent crosswind coming directly from the north bisecting the field which is pretty accurate for real life at this field. So we're a little squirrely here on the ground as we're managing the crosswind, and we are up. Now watch the altimeter. We're going to climb at VY until we get to 800 feet. Then I'm going to pull the mixture and count to three. While we're climbing, keep in mind guys, I'm not a flight instructor. Don't use this for real life flight instruction. Pull the mixture. 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000, nose down, pitch for best glide 65 and I'm going to go right into a forward slip because I don't have nearly as much room as I thought I did. So we've got uh, opposite aileron and rudder for the forward slip. Now we're going to come out of the slip and straighten out the nose. Keep that nose up for the soft field landing. Those trees are coming up quickly and we have no flaps, so it's taking forever to bleed off speed. And we're down. So that was interesting. I didn't think that I would have any time to get the flaps in and I went right for the slip. It takes about three seconds for each 10 degrees of flaps. So to get full flaps in, that's 12 seconds or so. And I was worried I'd be on the ground before I got the flaps in. So we did a slip. But the consequence is, if we zoom back out, we can see where we ended up. Uh, the consequence is, with no flaps, it took forever to slow down, and I used up all of this space. I mean, I am not too far from the end of the trees here. It was doable, though. 
you know, we were safe. Uh, and it was intense. And you saw that was 30 seconds. I had 30 seconds from engine failure to wheels on the ground to make all the right choices to come out of this in one piece. All right, let's try it again. But this time, instead of doing a forward slip to lose all of that altitude, we're going to go full flaps. So we are on the roll here. Airspeed is coming alive. Coming up on rotate speed. Still have that crosswind to deal with. And we are up. Climbing at VY. Watch that altimeter. Pull the power. One, two, three, and nose down. Best glide, 65, and now we're gonna bring in the flaps. No slip on this one, all flaps. The nose is popping up. I'm trying to manage that as I'm putting in all the flaps. And the risk here is getting too slow with full flaps abruptly put in. And you can see I'm really bleeding off the airspeed here. And you can see how much slower we are as we're coming down to the ground here. There we go, nice gentle landing. And about the same amount of time to get down with the flaps as with the slip. But if we zoom back out once we come to, ooh, hitting some bounces here, zoom back out once we come to a stop here, we can see how we did distance-wise. Huge difference, look at that. That's like half the distance to land compared to where I ended up doing a no-flap landing with the forward slip. And that's because with the forward slip, I was still going the same speed when I was in ground effect. I was still doing like 65 knots and I had to bleed all of that off without flaps. But with flaps, I was in the 40s as I was about to touch down and I quickly bled that off. All right, when taking off in the opposite direction from runway 25, we've got a soccer field and I know that that field is smaller. So I'm not even going to bother with the slip. I'm going to go right for full flaps in that direction. So we'll start out in air from 25. We'll kill the engine. 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, nose down. I'll start getting those flaps in, and I can already tell I'm not going to make it, so I'm going to also do a side slip, which you are not supposed to do with full flaps, but since we're going to be a ball of fire, we may as well try it. And we are gliding along here with the trees coming up quickly. We're going to pull out of the forward slip and straighten out, touch down, and steer to the left here to give us a little bit more room. That was close. Note to self, if you have an engine failure, hope that it's coming off of seven and not off of two five. For our last one, here we are in the downwind at a thousand feet pattern altitude, just past midfield and the engine dies. Looks like it's still going, but I pulled the mixture. It's just windmilling there and doing nothing. So now we'll get the nose pitched for best glide, which is 65 knots. And we've got some time, and I've actually done this one in real life because every student pilot has done this in real life. Your instructors love to pull the power on you in the pattern and have you do an engine out landing for real down to the runway. So the trick here is judging your descent and your glide, and you don't have to fly the pattern, right? You're an emergency aircraft, so you do what it takes to get to the runway. So in this case, we're going to just cut the corner. We're not gonna fly a rectangle. I'm going to fly a diagonal here and uh, cut out half of the base leg. Get myself rounded out here to line up with the runway. I don't have any flaps in. I'm going to only put flaps in if I need them or when the runway is made. Okay, we're lining up with final pretty nicely. We're a minute into our gliding. We've cleared the trees. That's the big thing. And it looks like we're high, but I know that we're just going to descend right here. And we've got a crosswind. See, I'm fighting with the crosswind, crabbed into it to try to stay over to the center line of the runway. And I'm not going to put in flaps. I won't make the runway if I put in flaps. So we're going flapless. Come out of the crab that I was in for the crosswind. And that was a nice touchdown. <laughs> that worked out really nicely. 
So we're gonna try to roll out here to runway 927 so we can pull off and we'll talk about what I learned. Uh, what I learned was, wow, what a difference between landing with flaps versus landing with a forward slip. And you used up your space really quickly on both sides. Those fields look big when you're flying over them, but at least in the sim, I consumed all that space really quickly. And it was 30 seconds. It didn't matter if I did a slip or if I did full flaps. Engine failure to wheels on the ground, 30 seconds. So that's how much time you have to figure it out <laughs> and get, get a plan for how you're going to land. So this was really cool. I learned something from this and I'm glad I did it. I can't believe I haven't done this before. So I hope you enjoy realistic general aviation content like this. If you do, be sure to click that like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, as always, for flying along with me, and stay tuned for further flight adventures.